All right, Jake, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, man. How are you doing? I'm good. It, it's been a minute. I mean, I, th I think it's probably been about 10 years. Uh, yeah, 10 years. Seen you. 10 years for sure. I mean, I actually didn't tell you this, but like JJ and I were at camp a few years ago and we co-cabin led. Oh, oh, okay, cool. 2019. Totally nice. About that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. JJ is my son and he's the, like the activities director at that camp now. Which is, that, that's crazy. That's awesome. You, you've known him since he was a little kid. I, I, I've seen some pictures of when he was like nine or 10 and yeah. you know, you're, you know, you were one of the leaders there down at Fur that's Point. Shout out to all our friends at Fur Point. Fur Point. Fur Hopefully Fur you're listening to, to the podcast. OG. Yes. OG. So they're going to be uh, catching up on, on what Mr. Jake Anderson is up to these days uh, as well as me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's been a decade. <laughs> We're just saying yeah. something. Yeah. So yeah, it's been great. I know that I was telling you that I moved down to Redding a while ago here in California. I've, I've been in Oregon most of my life. So moved down here for some, some opportunities with some music, which is great. Still something that <laughs> I'm, I'm chugging away at slowly. Like, you know, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it feels like we can make it a, like a timing thing of when that's going to happen. Cause that's, that's like my main dream is like writing music, it getting out there, it being on things. Like I like to make quality music that, you know, show up in a movie, you know, like as a cinematic piece or something. So not necessarily the tour, the touring thing is, could be fun, but being on that, that level of artistry is a dream, but I'm so happy with honestly being able to create the music and tell my story and have it impact people actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 A little Great. bit about it. So, yes. Yeah. So the, we, we kind of jumped ahead for, for listeners that yeah. don't know you can can you share a little bit about yourself and, and your background? Yeah. yeah. So myself, I mean, I grew up in Southern Oregon, small little town, lived there for most of my life. I'd say into middle school and high school is when I, high school is when I started to get like, into like the music thing for sure with background is this is like my whole story i just gotta ask that question clarifying <laughs> oh uh, yeah sure yeah. the yeah this, so growing up in in, in southern o o oregon the yeah t tell us a little bit about your family okay okay we'll, we'll dive we'll dive there yeah so one my family life back then and i mean this is you know the top the concept of the podcast so it's that we talked about is I, I grew up in a home that was really religious. My dad's a pastor or was a pastor. I think he still is. I know he like kind of goes in and preaches, but it was, it's a different generation because I'm adopted. So, you know, I was adopted from birth, me and two other brothers. And my dad is pretty significantly older and the generation he grew up in is a pretty hardcore generation. I would say they're their values are just different. Like it's, it's definitely not current with today's times in the aspect of like, you know, punishments. So it was, it was extreme in, in a lot of ways. Me and my dad have like a really good relationship right now. So it's kind of, it's, it's always kind of a hard thing to talk about. Cause you're like, man, I want to honor this guy. Cause he, he, he is really good at him and mine and his relationship are like super, super good, mm. but it was horrible growing up. Like in, in, in the ways of like, you know, like, Nowadays, if you were to hit your kids the way that I was hit, it would be, you know, abusive. So, and just the why and like kind of how that developed into a lot of my insecurities is not feeling worth it, not feeling of value. I felt really like alone. I didn't really want to, honestly, even as dark as it, like, I didn't really, really want to be here. There were, there were, there was a lot of that growing up where it was like the, all these intense feelings of not feeling useful or, or worth it. So that, also had a lot of me trying way too hard and then at times not at all it was always to, this to huge, prove your to prove your worth yeah huge pendulum swing where it was like man like my, my emotions were just all over the place growing up and so at one point growing up I decided to I ran away from home with some kids and it was kind of a sucky thing in other ways because like you know obviously if you're in a like an abusive situation you should be able to run away. One, nobody asked me about it. No cops did. I mean, we went all the way down to California. Not one cop was like, hey, how's your home life? I didn't mm. care. You know, like, whatever. Like, you know. Wow. How, um, how old were you? I was 17. Okay. So yeah. I was I was, I was, was almost, you know, going to be 18. But for a 17-year-old to be running away from home like that, I feel like 
should be some period, but anybody, but especially 17, if you're running away from home, hmm. I wonder what the home life's like, right. what's going on there. It just seems common sense to me now. Like I, I if I hear anybody run away from home, mm-hmm. like what is the home life really like? Like, yeah. give me you, like, and you, and you work with youth you ministry now. So you're, yeah, yeah. I'm you, aware you, of you it. would ask that. I would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The only time I don't is females in youth ministry like that's a, that's a no-go for me but i talk to the female leaders i'm like hey mm. like there's there's somebody specifically right now in our group where i'm like you've talked to her right and they're like oh yeah yeah you know we're, we're, we're aware i was like okay she mm. and she's she's removed from the situation with a new family from what i understand or, or like new situation but yeah i'm really cautious because i can just you can just see how somebody's responding and how they interact and but even just the defeat on their face like mm. you say something in correction and they're just like shut down or either that or super angry. You're like, that's a little irrational for mm. what we just said. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting reaction to take or yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So aware of that. So I, when it, when I ran away, nobody asked me any of that, the whole town weirdly, because it's, it's, I don't know what's up with small town concepts sometimes, but they all wanted to disown me. Like all my friends from high school, most of them, uh, not all of them. I have some really good friends that they just struggled with why I ran away. I didn't really know. Cause like, you know, you grow up in what you know and you, you're not really like, you just don't know that that's not normal, you know, mm-hmm. uh, ways to it. And in, in that town, it's probably more normal, but not, not, not for the rest of like the U S for sure. Like mm-hmm. there's, it's a pretty, <laughs> mm-hmm. not, not necessarily the way that you, you go about raising kids. Was it, was it like lo- loyalty to 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 your dad or no the town the high school mm-hmm. oh even even the high school it's not just church people yeah, you know this. church people outcasted but yeah yeah they were all upset because like everybody was like well we've been looking for you and you know now now that you turned yourself in like it was a waste of time and we thought you were like dead like they were upset that well, oh, kind of oh interesting. Uh, uh, ah, interesting. Said that it wasn't the, serious. Not, not, not the Luke 15 thing where people were glad you were alive. They're just yeah, like, no. you wasted our time. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a to us. 100%. Oh, no. I, I, that was the first moment I think I realized that. I was like, wow, okay. That's mm. great. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad I wasn't dead. <laughs> so, so, so you, so you went back home after that, but then that's how people were treating you. Yeah, yeah. I went back home, tried to go to school did while well, I was trying to get back in the community I, I was a volunteer like you could volunteer firefighter at 16 the volunteer fire station because of what I did decided to find a loophole to kick me out of the fire station which I was really involved and loved to do that type of stuff and so that yeah. impacted a lot of that mm. uh, and it's just all because of nobody asking those questions so it's like yeah yeah mm. because I think you'd be more understanding if you're like at least able to help a kid under uh, uncover that, but that's nobody's fault too. At the same time, yeah. I, so I you're 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 volunteering with, with the fire, but but people aren't picking up on on that you're struggling. No, it, because I think it's the community. I think it's very normal in a small town in that town. I don't know. I, I only know one small town that I grew up in, and like because like Grants Pass is close by, but like that community in Rogue River is really concentrated and it was just kind of normal. Like, you know, like there's a lot of neglect that, that happened out there that I could point back on now. I did. There was one person who did like, like a mom that, that knew that I talked to later in my life that were really close. And she kind of always suspected mm-hmm. something was up. Mm-hmm. And she asked me later in life. I was like, yeah, she's like, she actually just straight up was like, did your dad like beat you? And I was like, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. And she's like, crap. Cause she kind of, and she mm-hmm. is one of the people that like for back then would have been more like knowledgeable, I think in that, in that type of stuff and more concerned. Oh. So, mm-hmm. but you know, mm-hmm. you, you, you grew up in that. I would, I would never tell somebody he did. I, was like, I deserved it. I did something wrong. I wouldn't tell him like I got spanked or like hit like in middle school, you know? Well, and then also in high school. Cause like, well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get, it. he just, you know, there's, it's, it's just interesting. Like I, the more I know now, it's like, there's one of the circumstances when I came back, I tried to leave home again, not, not just, just in general in my car, which I owned, I'd bought my car. The car was completely mine, but my dad didn't want me to leave. And that's just, you know, his house, his rules type thing. So this was actually, let me, let me jump back a second before I get into that story. I actually went 
I made the decision at that point just because like home life was so bad and not just made the decision. I was able to go to Fur Point. And even though I'm messed up, I'm sitting, I'm up there trying to, trying to help kids, I'm not trying to help kids. I, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with myself, to be honest, like at that point, like, it's like, that was helping me. You're, too. you're there for you, for you too. Not Absolutely. just for the, Yeah. 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 And Jeff Moritz really understood that Jeff and Megan Moritz took me in after that mm. for a year. That was like their first start of their, like their, when they started to do a discipleship program there. And that was the first time that I kind of really got to understand family. I was still messed up. I did stupid stuff, but that was the first time I saw family. So so something happened with me and my dad and I came back and he tried to remove the spark plug wires from my car so I couldn't drive. Hmm. And I went back to put him back in and he came up behind me and put me in a chokehold and tried to choke me out. And I picked him up and it dislocated his ribs, which is totally unintentional. I had to deal with that because I'm like thinking I, I did that. Mm. I'm like, no, like I was getting choked. <laughs> like it's like, mm. I, you know, it's just that that's the thing with that kind of small town thing that I just wish wasn't a thing where it's like, why, why is that necessary? Like it, it like with, with an adult that does something like that, mm. you don't do anything. Like if they're going to go and take like, like, it's like, no, you call the cops. Like, it's like, you know, if, if, if there's something illegal done or done to you, like, I just feel like a lot of people, will make rules about life for themselves that they try to apply to other people that aren't really necessarily rules that I, th- I think apply. So, mm-hmm. and I think that happens in parenting from the little bit I've kind of seen, like I, I'll even see me do some things that I'm like, why am I saying no right now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not necessary. Right. Just, where did that, where did that rule come from? Yeah. 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 Why, why, why am I making a rule now about that? Is it just because I've been asked too many questions today and my capacity is at its limit? Mm. Yeah, that's probably it. That's mm. probably exactly what it is every time where I'm hangry. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's just kind of the the background that I that I've had. But again, like I've talked through this with my dad a bit and my mom more specifically to where like now, like I fought really hard. Like going out of that into to later life, I set really big boundaries with him once I finally figured this out and kind of knew that this is like that, like that stuff wasn't okay and how I was being treated. So once I started setting boundaries and and those boundaries were, you don't talk to me this way on a phone call about a situation that you don't agree with me with. Mm-hmm. So this conversation is going to end if we continue to talk like this and that would happen. I would be like, okay, talk to you later. Hang up the phone. Mm-hmm. I just kept doing that because I was like, no, you're, you're not going to like sit here and like, it's just a very, I, and I'm sure people who know being in families, it's, it can get really easy to get into that like argumentative circle mm-hmm. where you just want to argue in circles. That was all I knew growing up. It was literally the same argument just over and over again. Right. You're so just you heard st- the one side. stuck, stuck in patterns. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So yeah. Mm-hmm. once it broke, I, I, I don't deal with the same stuff anymore with him and our, our relationship super, super close. So how, yeah. how did you, make the decision or, or even realize that you could set boundaries with him? Well, I mean, that would have been through therapy later in life because, well, another thing that my parents were big into was you don't go to a doctor for anything. <laughs> so that includes um, a medical doctor for yeah, physical a medical doctor. And, you know, and he oh. got a doctor like, Oh, you don't need it. There's other things you could do or, or, you know, avoid medical bills. My dad notoriously hmm. would not go to doctors. And I'm like, now he has to, cause he's, old he's 81 so Mm -hmm. i'm like ah you kind of actually do need a doctor now man (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's like maybe you did for some things yeah so uh, i you know that that concept it took me a while to get into therapy because i was like what is therapy like i mean i tried to do you know i was we'll get into that too like my my relationships with women because of how i grew up were very codependent i would pretty much just like do anything just Mm -hmm. to receive attention for a long time. And I had, I had no like self worth. So I think once therapy happened and I was sitting there and, you know, he was going over, he's like, you've had chronic, he's like, for what it sounds like you've had chronic depression most of your life and you haven't had like really any happy moments. And that was like the first time that I was like, okay, it's, it's good to be happy. It's okay to be happy. And it like, that sounds obvious Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, it was just revolutionary to me where I was like, like I could, I could breathe for once and it was just really impactful. And then it was also about like self-worth. Like, like I was 
the way I was raised and because of religious household on the extreme end of like, because Jesus did this for you, you have to do this for everyone. You have to love unconditionally to like, and I mean, I, I get like sacrificially, like give up your life, sacrificially give up your serve. life, serve, mm-hmm. not just like love. I think you can love unconditionally, mm-hmm. but I think that's a good point. I think sacrifice, sacrificial is different than unconditional love in my head that would make that 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 makes it it's like you know it kind of feels wrong to say like you can't have unconditional love i think you could love unconditionally it's just like don't sacrifice you know like you don't that doesn't mean you have to like sacrifice yourself (laughs) to love somebody unconditionally necessarily Mm -hmm. um so yeah it kind of just let me turn my do not disturb off did you hear that no (laughs) that's good you're fine that's just going to get me it was so loud in my ears. Um, sorry, can you remind me where we were for a second? Yeah. So the, oh man. Self-worth. Yes. Self, self-worth. I, you know, we are, I'm, I'm curious about how you were coping and managing with the stress of all that. Like there's a lot of pressure on you. You mentioned you're codependent yeah. with, with, with relationships, but. Yeah. Um, at that time I'd also had, this is after. I mean, my story is, there's so much to my story. It's hard to not jump around sure. after, you know, moving out with my, moving out with my parents, you know, healing that or starting to, I say healing. I've just in the journey of becoming aware, to be honest, like got that. married, yeah. marriage did not go well. How old were you? I got married when I was 20. Okay. I'm not saying that 20, you should never get married at. I am saying that if you don't know yourself, then, then you shouldn't get married at that age. Mm-hmm. If you don't have boundaries, then you shouldn't get married at that age. I don't. I don't need. Even if you're, even things. if you're 25, that that's probably good advice. If you're 25, you're 30. Or you're 30. 35. Don't. My my simple rules of don't be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is comical because you're always gonna rationalize it in your head. And my my constant mm-hmm. thing is trying to fight against me rationalizing why somebody acted this way. It's like sometimes people just do things, and you mm-hmm. don't need to. Mm-hmm rationalize it so um yeah like i because of like having to feel like i had to like sacrifice myself to to do these things i had this really unhealthy codependent relationship with women where like i and the type of women i'm somehow typically was attracted to were it was like they they're interested really interested at first but then they would like fizzle out and like kind of keep me dangling on, on a line for a while of like what ifs and mm-hmm. there's just a point where i was like no more what ifs my time is way more important than that it is distracting me from doing the passions in my life like fitness was what really helped me in the moments where i was dealing with that if i was like feeling like wow this girl's ignoring me now like when it was just 100 percent okay the other day she's into me like wanted a date and then now it's like nah and we're mm-hmm. in this weird mm-hmm. zone yeah i just go run flip flip flopping it, it... Um, in uh, attachment uh, science, we call it f- folks uh, with they they vacillate, mm-hmm. so uh, h- hot and cold, and you don't know where you stand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. With that, yeah, very, very, and like just non-commit. Like, there's some fear I think there, and why they do that. Mm-hmm. There must be some base root fear. Don't know what it is necessarily. I can t- I know that there were family issues, no matter what. Well, but, but, but there's always family issues. I feel like to some degree. Mm-hmm. Even if you have the most amazing dad, they're going to be like, well, there was this one time. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and that's even yeah. me. Like, you know, like I can't really hurrying my dad about that stuff when that's that is how he kind of grew up. Mm-hmm. What I received was similar. Now, me, if I, if I if I really learn from that, I better not do it with my kids. Like that's and and you like the, the little I've gotten into, you know, dating a girl with kids is that I'm like. Oh, I have the same tendencies <laughs> to be extreme, whether or not I'm I'm doing it in this way. But my tone, how I deliver, how I talk, it's not great. <laughs> like I'm constantly working on how I'm talking to them. How are you coming you know? across? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that 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 whole thing. And then when I got into therapy, I just realized uh, talking about self worth is like, wow, I I am like what I do is important actually like like how i take care of myself so a lot of that came into i think consistent um just disciplines in my life to 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 
to meet my own needs. Like I, I come off very extroverted. I'll probably come off really extrovert on this podcast. And to a degree, yes, if the environment is a hundred percent okay. Mm. Like if, if everything's a cool yeah. vibe, if I feel safe, it's okay. Mm. For the most part, if I go into a group of new people, I'm the most awkward guy. Like I just want to hide in the corner. I don't want to talk to anybody. Mm. Uh, just because like I've been damaged so much by friendship, by, by bad friendships. That was mm. a big thing too. That I didn't, didn't even hit on this. Is like I wasn't just codependent on women. There there were guys that like I you know, I'd have guys that weren't good guys in my life that I'm like, man, these guys have no good intent for me. Either that or like, like if I'm interested in a girl, they're trying to take the girl that I'm interested in and not mm-hmm. valuing how they treat me. Like, you know, guys get competitive. So mm-hmm. one thing that I did was that, that was, this is actually one of the integral things. This is the integral thing for me setting boundaries and codependency with women mm-hmm. was that first off, I got rid of guys that would compete with me for a girl. It just like, brings out too much insecurity. Too much insecurity. Mm-hmm. They're they're ruthless. They can be very ruthless about it. Mm-hmm. Like it is, it is like, mm-hmm. well, just even like the the shots that people would take at me mm-hmm. in a conversation where it was like, you they know they're hitting something that's deep in you mm-hmm. and they're doing it in front of a girl to make you feel it's it's the mind game that 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 you do in sports when you're talking, mm-hmm. you know, crap on the field during football or or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. basketball. It's, like, it's psychological it's warfare psychological warfare and and so as soon as i eliminated people who do that mm. big step mm. big step for me would, I would you try would you try be, before you, you you kind of set boundaries and cut them out would you be trying to please them and get their approval or fit in with them sometimes but i i'm also i i, I flip on that I, I i sometimes and then sometimes i would call them out in an in a very not great way Either in an exploding moment where I'd be like, hey, man, you do this again. You better knock your crap off. Mm-hmm. Like, just just like that. And they're like, whoa, like, I, what's happened, man? This is what we've been doing. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like, oh, you know, why are you freaking out? It's like, mm-hmm. no, you know, you know. But mm-hmm. so, yeah, I, I, I would try to I in a group, I do try to, like, make sure everyone's kind of OK. That's kind of my thing. I, lo- I love to have a good environment. So if somebody's not, so yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely a me thing. Mm-hmm. I don't get so tied up into it now. I realize that for the most part and I go, Hey, it's okay for you to feel and when to make it okay, but don't, don't let it affect your entire day. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, don't, don't let it affect too mm-hmm. much. Like, you know, like yeah. here's, here's, here's where this should end. Mm-hmm. So that's helped. I did try to fight for those friendships, you know, and, and give opportunities one guy for three years. And then it was like, man you're you're still doing the same stuff so i guess this is it so cut ties and it's hard still cordial you know i see him around here in reading but mm. it it is hard but i have really close guy friends now that like if i call them and i ask them hey this is going on in my life they will call me they don't even it doesn't even feel like calling me out you know like when when, when you say like oh they'll call me out it's like well call sometimes that can feel like like it's 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 not necessarily for me you know if somebody's calling you out it's usually something that like is like when i've heard that term is like oh you've offended me so i'm going to tell you this it's like no they will tell me things in my life that they're concerned about Mm -hmm. like hey man because you get you get you have the sense that they they love you that they're telling you for for you not just for them to say they they did the right thing or or like self-righteous or whatever we're buddies I know like, like Mm -hmm. exactly like I know that if I was like, if I was going to go into a situation, they would have my back and be there. Mm -hmm. Like whether or not they like if whatever the situation was, if one of them's in Nashville, I know he'd fly out if I like had like some crazy thing that like, you know, I was like, dude, I need, I need help on this. Mm -hmm. He'd be there, you know, we'd figure it out. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting, fighting for that. And once I had those friends that I could, that I knew that I could go one, have a good time with. Like, we're going to go chill. I could talk to them about the girl. And they're like, dude, they're like, dude, you're crazy. Why are you still doing this? <laughs> like, why, 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 why are you figuring out the what ifs that I found later in life like with these same guys? We'll be sitting there and they're telling me something about a girl that they're, they're talking. To. I'm like, dude, why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, it's, 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 it's a cool, it's a cool place to be in my life where I'm like, wow, I went through all this crap for like, mm-hmm. 25 years and this is kind of i feel like this is prime the prime time because i feel like after 25 i'm 30 
I just really enjoy the friendships I make now. Like I, I really find a lot of like life in them. It makes it hard to stay at a job during the day because I, I just genuinely enjoy connecting with people in that way, you know, outside of things where I'm like, wow, like I used to just really hide at work through my twenties. And now I'm like, mm. ah, work is <laughs> work only does so much fulfillment for life. It gets you to get your basic needs, but your time mm. on the weekends, is, it's a pretty important time and your time off, mm. off the clock. So you're, it, you sound so much more comfortable in relationships instead of it being stressful and, and worrying about yeah. what's going to happen or if they're going to leave you or you're going to mess it up or whatever, or they're yeah. going to hurt you. You're comfortable in relationships. You're more comfortable with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean I don't struggle with it. Like I'm more, I still struggle, you know, dating in general. It's, it's very triggering for me actually, <laughs> mm. but yeah, I am more comfortable at the end of the day. Even if I freak out, I'm like, it's fine. I'm going to be fine the next day. Like I know one of the questions is like, what would I tell somebody who was in a moment in like those dark, t- those like dark times, like, you know, like, 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 ha- like, what would you tell them? It's like, man, that they're like literally this moment is temporary it is so fractional and whatever season in your life is whatever mess up it is it's like literally the next day there will be a change Hmm. that you can make like a better day you know Hmm. so it's Hmm. like literally Hmm. just remember like even though how devastating i mean i've gone through crazy losses this year and i've freaked out and thought everything was falling apart like Hmm. i lost 16 grand in equipment in a in a car fire in march oh man and my insurance didn't pay for it because of some loophole with them you know dj equipment like they're like oh you make money from it i'm like mm. sometimes <laughs> you know i didn't know that it was a, a loophole in their policy like for, for mm-hmm. it, some, some will cover your you know your business items like technically if you're a photographer and you've photographed like done photos on the side for cash ever then you don't qualify too and i'm like well that's horrible mm-hmm. you know like like how does that make any sense like you may, might have made like two hundred dollars one time from your camera stuff and if you told them that then you're your business not gonna get covered I so yeah that. i lost yeah. 16 grand oh, man. well I, I lost 12 grand about four thousand was in other people's rented equipment that i had to pay back so, yeah yeah hit all yeah. at once no insurance and i had a little GoFundMe, and then it like it, it it helped a lot i gotta be able to pay it off but most of this has been just me and the fact that I'm just overbooked with weddings and DJing gigs right now that has paid it all back, which is mm-hmm. great. Oh, nice. Sucky you had, you, you had a, a busy now. summer. Yeah. And the busiest year ever. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. great. It's still going. <laughs> it's still going. Nice. <laughs> so so yeah. I want to, I want to pause cause I don't want to move too far away from it and uh, yeah. go back to married at 20. Yeah. 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 And the, I'm I'm curious about what what you know kind of the lessons f- from that what that was like for you but then also what's it been like as a a Christian you know in in your 20s and and ha, you know being single again being being divorced and what what that's what that's been like yeah that was probably my my biggest we talk about church hurts and church wounds nowadays Mm -hmm. Um, that was probably my biggest church hurt because even growing up i was taught that divorce is never okay but you should never be divorced once you commit you're committed to one person forever i heard somebody say i thought it was a great thing it's like well nobody like gets into a a marriage and goes yeah in four years we will be divorced that's let's choose this day right everybody everybody thinks marriage forever believes it's forever so maybe like, like that was that was the thing where I was like, this is such a huge delusion for people to think that I, I like, like I just want it out. Like, it's like, no, like I wanted it to work. Hmm. My ideals and what I was raised with and the trauma that I had gone through affected my ability to be able to choose a good partner to a degree. Now, now that's still risky, I think in general, just, just to be honest, especially nowadays, hmm. it's kind of like I've, I've been on a lot of dates in the past few years and it was like, Wow. Like until you really got into into it and knowing them, you don't know them. It can feel so good and feel so right. And then you're, you know, three months later and they're gone. You know, you just mm-hmm. don't, you know, like it's it's like stuff stuff that I realized back then. There were there were things that with her, she's honestly on another person, she's a human, you know. 
like that that is a value you know like she she has value i don't want to like just get on and kind of roast her in that way but there because i did i did a lot of stuff but regardless of either sides of this we were not compatible did, but didn't know it because of how our values were you know we just we just found somebody i, I church and the way i was raised i wasn't allowed to date while i was at the house so which i think is actually kind of in my opinion it's not a good thing to teach your kids because then you kind of put too much pressure and want to date and ideal you it almost puts like more weight into you know making or like, like like having a marriage you know it's or like like choosing our person it puts more pressure to find somebody in, in a way the right person yeah and then you, you're kind of like i feel like it kind of creates some codependency in my head because you're like oh i gotta do, do these things i gotta find the right person so when it came to dating i just first person i dated basically i was like all right let's do this like found the ideals i want we're good even though there were like a lot of relational things where we just didn't communicate very well also just and i mean like insecure in in the too much fashion i feel i still feel like in relationships with the women that i'm typically attracted to or attracted back there can be a lot of insecurities jealousy things things that are like I mean, like I'm, I'm actually ethically holding a good ground here. I don't understand why we're having a conversation about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> we just, just genuinely don't know how you came up with this, <laughs> like this thought. This is how it is. I'm like, I don't know where that came from, but th- mm. this is where I'm at. That's not what I'm saying. You know, there was there was a lot of that to like the extreme, and it was how she would react and how she would treat me out of it to where it became. I was very like when we moved to Klamath Falls, I was. You know, she's going through dental hygiene school. I was really isolated. I was alone. I wasn't allowed to have friends. Part of this is like, just, just to be real, like, and I told you, and I don't mind airing my stuff. Like when we were first engaged, I was talking to another girl because in honesty, and this is what we kind of talked about. I was getting my needs met because I knew she couldn't meet my needs Mm -hmm. in the way that I probably needed. I didn't, I didn't even really know what my needs were, to be honest, at that point. Cause I'm so unaware of myself at that time, at that age, mm-hmm. you know, like that was the first time that I realized if I do this to somebody, they it will mark them for the rest of like, like they will always like, like the, the whole kind of like cheater mentality. Like, it's like, no, that that's a huge wound. So it's something that I never go to. Like I have such specific rules in my head mm-hmm. for myself about how I interact with women in a relationship, not in a relationship. Like it's like, Nope. This is the box. That's one of my like non-negotiables now. <laughs> but then you just don't know. Like you're like, why why did I why was I tempted to do something like that? It's like, well, in reality, it's not her fault. It's really not her fault. So it's not fair to process that with her in, in my head. And I'm glad I never did. She didn't line up with what would have been good for me in the long run. Her values, they well, they also changed. It went from like being like super like Christ centered and like this is this is like, you know, like gotta read our bible every morning which i don't necessarily agree with every morning like it's like there's other ways to connect with the spirit and i think the word is very good i want to be very clear on that it's just if you're reading the word out of obligation to your wife that's probably not a good thing you should probably be doing it for yourself is all i'm saying and then just kind of going like those like just the the different things there and then she basically was like wow i really just wish we wouldn't have been married and i would have come down to party at the college and I'm like, well, that's drastically different. That's not the same person that I married. So interesting. What 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 she wanted changed. Yeah, it did. In so, hmm. I mean, and and that would be the question that I would have for people out there when 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 they talk about divorce and and stuff is like, think of a scenario where you're asked that question. What do you, what do you do if somebody is going to go out and party? My dad had a very interesting approach with you know Hosea, like that whole book of the bible i wouldn't necessarily go to the lengths that like hosea did (laughs) that's that's not what i'm what what i'm about i have like i i I boundaries in that way it's like too sacrificial like we've talked about you know it's like well no there there is like i don't think we as humans we have conditions like we like we in relationships if something is like there is something that can push you too far to where you're into a mental instability zone. Yeah, we there, we we all have we have limits. 
to how we much we can serve and give. We we so that's what I mean by conditions. Like we're we're, we're that that is like that's gonna mess us up basically. So me going into it like I've I've you know there's just things that like weren't weren't okay. Just really really angry a lot. So she she went through a lot too. In fairness, with her family, that was like pretty mm-hmm. brutal. Just hard so life. just just lots of conflict. Lots of conflict. I don't think I think there are seasons for that. I don't think that should be the entire marriage. And that was like the entire marriage for four years. So mm-hmm. it was like, no, nah, I'm just not going to like at this point, like it was basically and I actually didn't make the decision. She made the decision for me to not come back. Like I was basically I was so controlled that I went out and bought a Harley <laughs> mm-hmm. without telling her. I was like, mm-hmm. well, she didn't work. I worked. And then she was at school and she was upset that I was jeopardizing the financial future and I'm working at a car dealership. I'm making okay money. Um, she's going to school. I'm like, why? Like she would nothing. I, I couldn't splurge on anything. That's a, that's a pretty big thing to splurge on, but that's, that's kind of the thing when you restrict somebody so much into like, you know, like not, not allowing them to have these freedoms. We get a little irrational if we're, <laughs> so Mm -hmm. constricted in different ways to where we don't have any freedoms and you know like being a human so Mm -hmm. i don't know i did it and it did not and that's her whole reason why i was like not allowed back in the house basically i went to a bible camp and led worship for a week and that whole thing went down and then i was like okay can i come home and she's like no i was like Mm -hmm. oh okay Mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna move i moved and yeah yeah so that was that was that was how that went down it was not I don't know. You remember Garrett Pratt? Oh, sure. Yeah. Garrett was up at me with that camp. This is a completely different camp than for a point. We're mm-hmm. up there. And he literally was like, it kills me to this day. Cause I do think I do remember one conversation with the only person who told me that my, my ex-wife wasn't like good for me. It was him. Mm-hmm. The girl I'm dating now was the other person who was going to, who was going to say something, but everybody told her not to. And that wasn't her place. And I was like, well, kind of wish somebody had like like I Garrett did but you know like at that time in our relationship you know it was it was a kind of like he might not have been you know like at the time it just didn't affect me the same way as if like if we were like close if we would have been closer mm-hmm. like now now if Garrett tells me something I'm like yeah no I'll listen a little bit here I'm sure you're probably mm-hmm. pretty accurate on that when you're uh, ni- and you, when you're 19 20 maybe you're not listening you're not to, listening to, 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 to people. Yeah. I've been told to listen for the last, you know, 17 years. Well, well, 19, 19 years there with them. And I was listening to the wrong things the whole time. So you're rationalizing that. What, right. what do I listen to? Who do I listen to? Right. So, yeah, that's part of the journey. I know I strayed a little bit, but that's relation relationally. I think it's really important to choose to like be wise about who you're choosing. You And then also to remember, you can only be so wise. Some things still happen and you're not going to rationalize with why they happen because <laughs> life is life and it changes. So, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. So, so, so what you weren't wanting that, that, that happened. You couldn't return home. Yeah. So, so your, 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 your life is not going the way you were expecting. How, how did you kind of stabilize and, and get, get back on track? Well, yeah, I'd actually gained quite a bit of weight at this time. So it was just, it does give context because I think that that shows how far I let myself go in some ways into like not caring about who I am at all because it was like, you know, like I, I wasn't, there was no self-worth. So like I just gained weight because I didn't care about fitness. I felt like I needed to just give all my attention to her and meeting her needs in that way. Mm-hmm. And then I would cope with food. Mm-hmm. Food has always been an issue for me. I don't know where it started, childhood, whatever. I will binge all the foods if given the opportunities. And that's like always still a constant kind of fight to be real. So I I was big. I ended up having a, like my appendix removed randomly. And for some weird reason, that was like the first time that I noticed that like I had like that I was like fat. Like it's just because my like mm-hmm. belly hung off <laughs> differently because even though it was laparoscopically and they're small incisions, it just it's like, oh, that's not normal. Mm. So mm-hmm. I literally just got up two weeks after my surgery and I was like, I'm going to start running. I started running five or 10 miles a day. And I was 230 pounds at that point. That, that was your high weight, 230? 230. 
Yeah. Two thirty, and you just jumped right into running five, 10 miles. Well, that running was small. Like it was yeah. some small so build it was up. like yeah. 16 minute to 18 minute mile paces, I'd say. And now it's like, you know, and in, in my peak when I was prepping for some law enforcement stuff, like I, when I did, I tested with CHP down here, I ran six minute and 30 second mile pace for a mile and a half. So mm -hmm. huge. And this is still like, from that time that would have i was 29 when i did that i lost weight when i was 26 hmm. so three years yeah yeah maybe four maybe i was 25 i it was between 25 and 26 because hmm. it was on my 26th birthday hmm. when i had the surgery yeah hmm. okay hmm. or two days after but yeah 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 so yeah so you started lost, with with running and running and and what are you what are you thinking on these runs Oh, that's actually an interesting question. Everything. Like that's the thing about running in long distances. Cause I run long distances obviously. And you just get, I would love to run in the heat of the day or something fascinating about hitting the, I, like where your, your, your brain just melts. Like you're, you're, you're sweating. You're just like, wow, this is like really hot. And you're just running and you're like in this zone of like, it's, it's stress, but it's also peaceful. I don't know. For me, it's very like cathartic, like where it's like I am like I'm just able to think a little bit clearer or like it just balances out emotions, I think. And like hmm. I think I think guys maybe struggle with a lot of hormonal imbalance, to be honest, like estrogen. And I mean, the foods we eat stuff really kicks that up. And I think that I don't I don't know. I'm not I'm not a doctor, but I've just noticed the difference when I'm eating cleaner and drinking a lot of water. I typically think cleaner like my emotions are a bit more stable. Yeah. And if I'm also fitness at the same time, fitness is actually probably the biggest thing. And then eating and diet are like, they're, they're there. They're all matched mm. when they're both working in congruency. Uh, it's great. If you are greater on one or the other, it's still good. But if you're down on both, good luck. Mm. <laughs> like so, it's hard. You're, so, so you kind of started with the decision to, to, to run. And then did you start eating healthier in response to that? I was in too much of a calorie deficit. I was doing some fad stuff. That's how I lost the weight. I lost like 40 pounds in a month and a half, hmm. which is wild. Mm -hmm. Here's the difference is, is like there's zero body composition from that. I lost muscle too at the same time. So mm -hmm. it's just still mm -hmm. fat, but just smaller, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So my body fat was probably still higher at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I just, I, I, the, the, the diet came with it, but I think where, and I was stuck in this, like, oh, I, I found the way I've got the hack. I'm, I'm all knowledgeable now. Like I've, I can figure this out. Mm -hmm. And it, there was a lot of this like fluctuation with, with diet and stability and, and exercise and, and doing it. Like, I was like, I'll just run. I don't even want to do weightlifting because weightlifting didn't work when I did it before. I'm like, well, strength training is actually really good. And that's all I, I do. Um, basically bodybuilding type stuff. Now I'm not the, I'm not a massive guy at all. Um, I'm like 170. 170 175 is where i range um but i just kind of have been able to like stabilize this over the last few years and kind of just be open to hearing about dieting things i used to be really into macros macros i think are great i think it's a great way to help with maintaining your muscle or building your muscle like having a higher protein content does make sense for that degree but when you're i got too fixated on it and it, it kind of created some some eating issues with me where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you need to chill. Like if you have to go to McDonald's and get a freaking hot spicy chicken sandwich, like you're going to be fine. <laughs> as long as you don't like over, like as long as you keep within your calories for the day, you know, mm -hmm. like this is, this mm -hmm. is where your body is to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. So, like <clears throat> with, with your, your, your marriage ending and then start starting to run, it sounds like you're, 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 maybe trying to kind of get control of, of something with con control of, of weight control yeah but how, so how are you doing emotionally and spiritually at, at that in, in that time you know i've always been in even with all the stuff that i've kind of been through church has been like a really big thing for me so i've been really spiritually grounded just because i've even through like divorce and stuff I, I've, I've gone to churches that are I would just say more understanding because it's a, where I'm from divorce is no, no. And the whole church that we went to, I was basically, nobody would talk to me. I was never technically outcast. I felt it because it was like, nobody would talk to me. And it was always, you could just always just 
it wasn't easy anymore. Or it, it always felt like there was tension and like, like they wanted to ask some bigger questions that they would never ask, you know, or there's just judgment. You so, could always, you could always feel that, but no, you couldn't talk it out. Yeah. 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 I couldn't talk it out. So mm -hmm. I've just, you know, got into churches where you know, I just feel like they're understanding of like, man, things happen, you know, it's like, but, but what are we doing now? And that, that is, I think what the Bible teaches anyways, it's not like, because if we were too worried about the sin we did before, mm. like what, where, where is that? Where is that going to like, you know, <laughs> where's the fruit going to be from that? If we're always focused on that, I think mm. there's, there's times to acknowledge that for sure. But yeah, so I, I found myself in, in those environments and then just that way, but I also found in running and fitness that I connect with the spirit a lot through that. Actually, it's really interesting, especially on the long runs. I would like, it's like meditation mm. in a way. Or if I'm like listening to worship music, I listen to a lot of worship music a lot. And that's like really helpful. It's like when I talk to God, probably the most is like through those moments, like, Hey, this is like, like, you know, like I'm struggling with this mm -hmm. or Hey, you know, like what do you, what do you have to tell me today? And just in general, not even just cause I'm struggling. A lot of times we use the helpline a lot. I mm -hmm. do, but it's like, hey, you know, what do you have to tell me today? You know? Mm -hmm. So even when yeah. you're doing okay. And just, even just, when you're just doing listening okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. you, you so, mainly go hang out with your friends when you're okay right mm -hmm. you, you do both but like you, you still hang out with your friends when you're okay it's like why don't we do that with mm. you know, the lord it's with like, god yeah so uh, hours running and mm -hmm. and and listening and worship yeah. yeah yeah then i blew out my foot though so i just <laughs> i dialed back on the overtraining because i was mm. definitely overtraining i was prepping for an ultra marathon a 50 mile and i rolled my ankle and oh. ruined my chances for it but i also have the shortest legs like i don't know why i'm thinking i'm gonna be this runner like my <laughs> back space even like it was like six minute 30 second mile. like like you gotta <laughs> you, you gotta get back into jujitsu you know i go i do i'm kind of built for yeah yeah I, that was if if i take all the sports i ever did mm. just just for me not saying i'm good at jujitsu no if I take all of my baseline sports and everything I've done, I'm better at jujitsu from the start than all of them. Just naturally. Yeah. 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 Just for One, me. Yeah. 175 short legs. You know, Marcelo Garcia would yeah. be a good grappler to emulate. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too bad. We we got a good gym down here. Rice brothers. I haven't been there yet. I got to go check them out. But, and then I did some things with impact jujitsu because the, the gym I was at in Klamath Falls was connected with them. Oh, fun. Um, so, mm -hmm. For, yeah. for a bit but i did i did a competition when i was 230 pounds i wish we had a photo which is like joe rogan pull, pull up the, the photo <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like where i'm 230 talk, pounds talk, talk us through, talk us through the mac jake yeah, yeah. 230 yeah. pounds trying to do jujitsu and i basically won because there wasn't a fourth competitor i i got a third place trip because there wasn't a fourth person to compete against the, the, this this happens at tournaments i i've i've received a, the bronze medal the <laughs> bronze one. medal right like, right the participation it was yeah it's like fine. i mean this is so i was three weeks into training and i'm, I'm gonna do a competition hey this hey if, if, if 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 you're willing to go at three three weeks in or three months in, like that that, that respect that put yourself out there like yeah, yeah it's i'm uh, wild yeah. I, I still have my crazy ideas and I'm that that's when I know I'm like, I need to emotionally regulate somewhere because <laughs> I know that if I'm like wanting to get like recently, I was like, I'm going to get back into training for a season. Cause I can only afford it for a season. If I'm going to do my idea is I want to do like an MMA match, which is just so unrealistic. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> it, it's so stupid. Like, I just want one, just one time. One oh, time. Go, go for it, Jake. I know. Uh, yeah. I gotta get boxing though. I and... had, I had, I had my, my, I had my first, I, I, my two and only at, at 30. So. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, 30, yeah. 30 minutes to be the way where you're like, I just want to get hit. In the face. <laughs> I want to see what it feels like. You, you probably regret you, it. You don't have to sign up for an MMA match to get punched in the face. All you have to do is no. train, train. That's the only you way sign you up to get, train. No, train. <laughs> training. Training is the other only way to get out of going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're just training officer. <laughs> yeah. Training. In the Fine. public park. Yeah. Or in a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Safe, safely yes yeah so yeah anyway emotional regulation has been a, a thing mm -hmm. that fitness spirituality has really helped out with but they mm -hmm. all kind of work together I yeah like. yeah if you're missing one it's going to be a little lopsided mm -hmm. so, so you you were diagnosed with 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 like 
chronic depression. Do, do you still struggle with depression? These yeah, mm-hmm. all the time. But it's so different. Mm-hmm. It's so different. I don't know if that makes sense to you. But mm-hmm. so it was dystemia is what they said. I, I, I personally probably should go back and get another consultation with somebody else because just labeling from one time is a bit rough. Because like if I were to go by that diagnosis, I'm like, I don't know. Like because my life's so different now that I realize that. Mm-hmm. Literally that moment in the next year, I was like, a, a different person everybody like the the new church i was at like because i also didn't let go from a church that was a church plant in southern Oregon. that was a pretty pretty cool church one of my best buds now like we're still good i'm still good friends with the pastor even though he made the the tough call mm-hmm. i cool. <clears throat> yeah yeah everybody from the from the new the new church i went to was like, man you are like a different human mm-hmm. like all my friends Nowadays, they're like, wow, you're like so different than you were before. Because it was just so obvious that I needed validation. And I still do. I still struggle with that. I struggle with that. I struggle with depression, still codependency. But it's, I have tools to manage it. I'm not so fixated and I'm not so devastated from like the outcomes of those like failures in relationships mm-hmm. and things. So yeah, yeah, it's been super helpful. The just hearing that. That that diagnosis you you mentioned it was like you, you could finally breathe. It, it was a it was it was a big relief. Well, yeah. Be, besides, kind of naming it and understanding the problem, what's something that you learned from the therapy that's been helpful? Well, that guy was interesting, <laughs> so <laughs> he wanted to put me on some weed. <laughs> oh, okay. And I'm like, so he wanted to go straight into to into that route. The which, medicate um, ma- medicating that way. Huh. Yeah, and I'll be real. Like, I mean, I put it in my for my law enforcement application, so it's, it's no secret. I've smoked weed before. Not good for me. Mm. Not not something I like to dabble in. Just for because mood. I yeah. when mm. my quality of life goes down, I just want to see it sit and eat all the potato chips. Yeah, sure, it might like level me out for that moment, but you also get anxiety from it. Mm. Like, I I if I sit too long, I get I have a weird balance. Like, I can't on my days off. I used because I was so into work that when I took a time off on a day. I'd get so overwhelmed that I wasn't being productive for a few hours. So I had to get over that, that anxiety moment and being okay, like not doing something and getting uh, quality rest, feeling anxious and or guilty or just, well, yeah. and that was, indi- mm. that was just pointing to that. My work was a toxic environment. I needed to leave once I left completely mm. different. Uh, just too much pressure. Like the, yeah. Anyway, I, I, there's some things that I can't like deal with that type of person with i don't have a way to emotionally regulate that to to have a quality life so the easiest thing to do for me was to remove myself from that situation hmm. the question one more time <laughs> my brain is so add hmm. i get onto a thought and oh I'm like, oh just just what did you learn how, how did therapy oh yeah you? so yeah. therapy though the reason i went to therapy this is a big one just speaking about my codependency i was with a girl for two months that I thought we were so infatuated and this is, you know, after marriage, we were definitely doing things that were intimate and it was like really hot to try, which I don't agree with doing things that are like super, like I just, you should have boundaries and like, just let it naturally progress to, to understand who you're going to be with. Like hmm. I'm not, I'm not into that. Are you saying, it sounds like you're saying it's it's, it's, vague. I was having sex. Yeah. And let's just call it out. We, we understand that, but, but it sounds like what you're saying is you, you, you wish you you had, or you, you'd recommend like getting to know each other better. Like not, not just, just that be everything. Yeah. It's just, it's too much. it, It does too much to your brain. I feel like. I feel like that that alone, just even the feelings and things like it's just like it does too much like in my head neurologically where I'm like even more fixated to where I'm like, oh, they, like this is like I, I oh, put sure. really too much identity into into the relationship where it's like, wait, we're just really going to know each other. And sure enough, two months mm-hmm. in, she cheated on me. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I like just devastating. And it was it was the worst experience. Like and. Mm-hmm. I'll own that part of the story because you should. And I think it's more normal than a lot of people let on in, in the church. Like I, I was in church leadership, things like that. Not at the time. Not that that should like, it doesn't really matter. I'm still held to the same standard. I feel like in my head, mm-hmm. like, you know, mm-hmm. so, but learning from that and like going through that, I was like, man, I, I definitely learned some things where it was like, okay, well, she was no good. 
there were signs I saw how she would talk to other guys, even though she was so infatuated with me. It's just how she talked to other guys. I was like, I'm not comfortable with that. And I would talk about it. I would, because this is the time that I was trying to advocate for myself. Oh. Mm-hmm. Out of that relationship is when I learned like, oh, dude, you are so codependent. It was, I went to the first codependency class at a church that I'd ever been to. Went through that, starting to uncover. Then I was like, man, I'm so unstable from this because she was like, it was manipulative. She was super manipulative, actually worse than my ex-wife. So it was like mm-hmm. such a significant, like much more mistreatment than I've ever been treated. Then I was like, mm-hmm. all right, I need legit therapy. Like I'd get tension in my forehead and I, I, I like had to like rub it out just because like so much mm-hmm. was getting messed up in trauma in such a very quick time span because she's just, I don't know what it was, but she just could not be monogamous. And she just was not, I guess. And so I went into therapy for that. But I'd say the codependency class at the church mixed with counseling, like professional counseling. I know that there's some things that integrate both, which would be great too. I suggest not just, if you're, if you're at a church going through counseling, I would still recommend professional help at the same time, somehow integrate the two. Because professional help isn't necessarily, like if you go to a, like the professional I went to, he was like trying to rationalize with me that it's it's okay for her to not be monogamous. So I'm like, I'm not having an issue with that. I'm having an issue with that. I don't want to be like, like I don't want to be with someone who's doing this. Mm-hmm. And this is a boundary for me. Mm-hmm. But he was like, I guess the way I was saying it, he thought I must have been shaming her. And so he's trying to like mm-hmm. fix that thought in my head. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you that this is a boundary for me. I'm not trying to shame her in that, but it's a boundary for me. So it needs to be done. So mm-hmm. that was um, a big unlocking thing for me where I was like, okay, this is bad news. And so that was the first time I actually stood up to a woman and was like, blocked a number. Mm-hmm. No more contact. We're done. Mm-hmm. So versus great. versus trying to bend over backwards, trying to make it work. Yeah. Or holding on too long. That was, that was the courage moment for me. It's like, nope we're done. Mm -hmm. So, and it was because like, you know, I started to get really good buddies around me and some friends that were like awesome. So that, that helped speak into my life and stuff. Um, And so that was kind of the journey. I would say that's where the counseling helped. I would say depending, and I'm, I mean, you're the professional in this, but I did feel like I should have probably jumped to another professional after that. It's hard though in that, in it, because like, you know, you're on a waiting list for a while. So it was, Mm -hmm. it was really nerve wracking when, Mm -hmm. I ended the counseling with that guy because I was like, oh, I'm not, am I going to be okay? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. one of the things I noticed too, is that, that I started to work on is like just pouring in all this. One thing that kind of, I think wore on my friendships was that I would just pour way too much processing process with one person or out of nowhere, somebody I didn't know. I was just so needing to like talk to somebody about it. Your verbal pro- you're a verbal processor. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just got around. And, and when when game. you were when you were growing up, though, it doesn't sound like y- you you were able to say what you needed to say with with mom and dad. Yeah, you weren't allowed to verbally process. Mm-hmm. So it, it is interesting because I I so verbally process now. That's been a tool that is it literally soothes soothes soothes, soothes me. Sorry, <laughs> I'm stuttering. I'm messing yes. up the word, but mm-hmm. calms me down quite a bit when I can actually just kind of work through the process a little bit. Like, rationalist mm-hmm. well but this way even if i don't even if it's not true you know it's like mm-hmm. at least i gotta talk about it so yeah yeah therapy has been great in in those aspects it's just like if you know that maybe your beliefs are different than your therapist maybe keep that in mind when you're going to it and right right yeah you the i i tell folks your your beliefs are going to be different than the closest person in your life like my my, the, my perspectives my beliefs are different than my wife's you know like we we agree on you know lots of the major things but it, it's okay for you to have a therapist who has different beliefs or even worldview but you got to trust them yeah, yeah. And you got to be feel safe with them and you got to be yeah. able to say what you need to say unfiltered if you can't do that then yeah i probably need to yeah, I, I would say that probably more of the issues. I just didn't feel super safe mm-hmm. with him mm-hmm. in general, just because like, even even how he felt like he was directing me. I was like, I mm-hmm. don't feel like 
me just trying to be okay with her being but he did unlock something like, like that's the thing with her being you know like wanting what is it polyamorous polyamorous where, where like they're like wanting to be in like multiple relationships mm-hmm. uh, we'll just say poly because i can't say those words right now you, you did fine. <laughs> i can't i can't i don't know why <laughs> it's just it's so funny because i'm such a reader <laughs> i read so much it's like okay i can't speak today yeah, so he he, because I was like, oh well, it, it, he was right. I have a choice to be in that relationship or not. I'm like, well, if I'm only okay with being monogamous, then why am I in that relationship? That doesn't want to be. Well, I shouldn't be. And that's the answer. So when I finally got the courage, I was like, blocked. We're done. No more contact. You know, that was that was, that was probably the strong thing for me. So. Yeah, going through that, yeah, I think I think therapy was like really, really helpful to get through a lot of these processes and really life giving in that aspect. I can, I admit it's a hard challenge sometimes, like financially, to be able to to do it, especially in my income bracket because I'm not making a ton of money, but I'm not making little money. <laughs> California is right. hard a hard gap to live in. Oh man, especially yeah. when you lose sixteen grand worth of fi- like equipment and you have to. The taxes to get that back. I paid more for it because last time I bought it in Oregon. So the taxes are 7%. So that was awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It's wild to think about. But yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. We're, any other? I'm trying to think. Hmm. That's well, pretty cool. well, we, we, we can wind things down. The two two things I'm, I'm curious about. Like, cool. so, so these days, yeah. What's, what's your, your, your week look like? Like you, you mentioned you're still playing music, you're, you're doing camps. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about ministry and 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 dating and relationships yeah. these days. <laughs> ministry, dating, and relationships. So that's yeah. Because I remember saying something. The, the thing that like we're talking about 30s is like where where I'm. It's clicked for me, and I don't. I don't. I'm not the most effective at it, but like I I do prioritize my my hobbies and my dreams a, a bit because at least at some point, like I don't I don't just like go. Oh, I'm too busy at work today, and I get home and like. I've got like, you know, I go to the gym. I, I run in the morning two miles. In the evening, I'll go to the gym and I'll do 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what, what body part I'm hitting or like if I'm doing back. Well, usually I start out, honestly, like the I'm doing kind of more like Dorian Yates. You know? <laughs> I hate to say that because you'd expect it to be like steroided out. And like, <laughs> 300 pounds Dor- dorian yates for for listeners who are not familiar he's a huge bo- bodybuilder right from from england i think yeah yeah, 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 yeah. he's yeah. from england he's like massive and he like his 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 approach is different because he goes in and i don't i don't do it maybe to his failure you know like he's he's like you don't need to do volume that's what he did different that from arnold I'm probably pretty sure Ronnie. Co- well, Ronnie Coleman was huge too, but like hmm. Arnold, Ronnie, some of these other guys that were doing. You're not. You're not having to be at the gym for three hours. No. Or six hours. No, and I'm maintaining, yeah. at least. Like, I mean, I, I I have a hard time growing muscle in general with it. Yeah, just in general, and like I can put on body fat so much more significantly. It's insane. Hmm. Um, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. Like genetics are just genetics in some ways, unless you you know TRT, which talk to your doctor <laughs> that's all i'm saying Gotta talk to your doctor i don't know like check your hormonal imbalances there's doctors for that figure it out then yeah so i, I I'm, I'm in there much less but there are disciplines that i have and they don't always work out the way that i want them to like last week i missed leg day because my week like i have it planned and then it got away and i was like, crap like i was slammed this day with unexpected things that i'm like i'm out of town like I have an anytime fitness membership, I could have stopped. But I, you know, kids picking them up from Oregon, bringing them down here—it's like, it's it's wild. So just trying to to be a little bit forgiving on myself with yeah. that. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, the the fitness thing and and, and the disciplines there are big. But what what I'd say is like, the thirties are for practicing, like every day. Like we 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 know by now that this is a time that I was like, okay, well. If I'm going to make this stuff work, I want to spend time on it every day, whether it's, you know, song, singer, songwriter stuff. I didn't even talk about most of that on this. And that's mainly what I do is singer, songwriter is my biggest passion. So I'll, I'll sit down, and write songs. I wrote a couple songs for, I was writing songs for a church worship album that didn't make it. 
And that's actually an interesting point because it's like that to me could have been very devastating hmm. in a previous version in my life. I would have been like, oh, I'm not worth it. Why am I a musician? Which we all struggle with as musicians and we get super emo about it. Hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm like, now I'm like, no, nah, I, I was able to put two frogs and two, two frogs, two, two songs in front of somebody who has like done albums for Bethel, Jesus Culture, Red Rocks Worship, Chris Tomlin, Carrie Job, like big names, was able to put two songs in front of him. They didn't make it. That's okay. I still get, he's, I'm waiting on the feedback from the, the worship pastor from the church, but I'm like, I actually was like, no, I actually do want to hear feedback. Like, yeah. you know, like, like, like I, I objectively want to know, even if I don't think it's right, I still want to know because like, what if I even just tried to tweak it that way? Let's see if that actually does something, mm. you know, mm-hmm. you don't have that mindset in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah you like you, you lose you, you you well you you lose but you 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 learn you, yeah. you, you you even when you get beat down if you're yeah. willing to to learn learn what you need to learn you're gonna get better as a musician half of my the last decade has been figuring out that it's okay to lose mm-hmm. it's art i get to leave behind a body of work that maybe nobody sees but it fulfilled me for the for the time it's like do it every day you know if you, and it's okay if you don't aren't able to do that day but like yeah like mm-hmm. i'm 30 great great time to practice you know <laughs> djing and stuff so. Le- learning learning to love how to practice and yeah and having fun with it and enjoying it yeah, and creating yeah. it's like it's man that's good. actually a really cool moment i mean it's hard it's just like working out in a gym like you know you can you can get into that overtraining thing you're like pushing it way too far and you're like okay chill out chill out a little bit but yeah and then so that was well that was kind of a, a, a jumble of things ministry i still just i'm a worship leader i do i play electric guitar which i didn't play before a year but now i have like goodness the pedal board like it's like the amp yeah it's it's it's, it's a little while it's, it's growing <laughs> it's growing it's growing my musicianship because i you know i was just made by with chords and singing and halfway doing it and now i'm like no you have to memorize parts my guy you have to actually learn like why you're doing these notes like cage system so you can get around your fretboard you know and actually know how to play some songs and i still kind of cheat some ways but most of the time i'm i'm learning a song i'm memorizing the song and doing it i still have things to connect but i i get away with it i do pretty well for only only been playing for so long for electric because even if you play acoustic it's it's a different instrument it's it's the way it interacts with your pick, like all all your controls on your pedals. It's a whole different ball game. So and understanding that. So mm. yeah. So that's that's what I do there. I still do youth ministry to a degree. I do like once a month is where I'm at now. I used to do every other week last year, but it's just too much for me in, in the life that I have now with DJing pretty much every weekend because I DJ out not just at weddings. I DJ in bars. So because it just makes money and you know I'm like. I'm not, I'm just letting people do their thing and I'm making money from it. So I'll, I'll do it. But that, that in, in conjunction, I have to be really careful where like how much I'm booking myself in a month, because right now, September, I'm booked out every weekend. I have a, I have a gig every weekend. So I am, I am like, Ooh, September is probably not the best time for me to be on for, for much. So balancing that. So ministry is really fun. I, I do a, a camp ministry every year. I'll go out and do a week away with just because that was so impactful for me being at camp and like mm-hmm. being able to get away from the life that I was living mm-hmm. to be able to do just to be free was so life giving to me that like, I, I just love mm-hmm. to go there and, and connect with, you know, kids through, through music, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, mm-hmm. that was impact. I wouldn't have played music if I had not gone to camp and seen Jeff Moritz play. Mm-hmm. would never have happened i would never be in this this position that i do and in, in in the passions that i am i was yeah. 17 when i started playing that's so, awesome Sh- so. shout out to jeff jeff Morris, the og i miss him yeah el jefe yeah <laughs> okay it, it, it's been good to have you on yeah to, thanks to man. catch up it's and so good. i the so we'll, we'll put your ways to connect with you in, in the show notes and, yeah and then i i don't I know it it, it it there the, the, you you've got lots of stories that we didn't get to 
I think it, it might be fun to to talk yeah a little bit more about about okay. dating and and how the church can support and single people yeah and let's... and 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 folks who are divorced better absolutely because that I, yeah we didn't touch on that and that's like we we definitely want to resolve that because it's like my, my i i'm really happy with the season and i'm really happy with my relationship with the church now mm-hmm. like it's good i have an understanding that people are going to think certain things and that's not my responsibility mm-hmm. like that's 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 on them in that aspect but growing up or being an outsider in the church that's a pretty advanced tool <laughs> to be using mm-hmm. i feel like for base level entering in a church so i think there's definitely some ways that church could assist with that with people for sure i don't know how necessarily right oh well, well, it's got to be a way we'll have the discussion i was <laughs> i've been thinking about having like a, a panel like to, to just talk about how we could do it yeah. because it's i mean it's it's something that like is is important to me like we've been at our church for two and a half years and julie and i my wife and i we're still trying to figure out like where to serve and you know how, how to help yeah. and yeah so yeah thanks for Thanks for coming on, Jake. Thanks so much, man. Have a good day. Have a a good September. See ya.